Over the past five years, I have found the flowable composite resin mock-up to be an excellent tool for increasing a patient's understanding and education of the planned clinical procedure. These prototypes allow the patient and the restorative team to establish parameters for function, lip profile, incisal edge position, and gingival orientation while eliminating confusion and misunderstanding. This reversible and prepless technique can be used by the clinician and ceramist as a guide for developing a pre-approved functional and aesthetic final restoration. In some cases, these transitional restorations can be worn for months or even years by patients with limited financial means. This process can be performed intraorally without the need for anesthesia. A clear vinyl polysiloxane impression can be used to replicate the diagnostic wax up. The matrix can be placed intraorally and used as a transfer vehicle for the flowable composite to be injected and cured. After adjustment and polishing procedures are completed, the transitional restorations can continue to be modified to satisfy the functional and aesthetic needs of the patient. And now I would like to share with you this technique utilizing a new next generation flowable composite genial universal flow a 55 year old patient presents with incisal fractures on the maxillary central incisors upon occlusal evaluation the occlusal findings indicate an insufficient canine guidance and posterior disclusion the patient indicated her concerns for the yellow-orange discoloration and requested a brighter smile. An initial shade determination was performed prior to the bleaching procedure. Once the bleaching process was completed, the restorative procedure was delayed for one week to allow for elimination of residual oxygen or peroxide formation in the tooth structure that can reduce the potential bond strengths. A restorative shade determination was performed before dental dam placement under a color-corrected daylight source of 5500 Kelvin using the right light shade matching light by AdDent. Notice I use color comparison by using direct composite placement of an A1 and B1 shaded flowable composite Genial Universal Flow polymerized onto the facial surface of the central incisors. This allows us to achieve proper color registration. Two initial diagnostic wax ups were designed to evaluate form and function. And if this wax up is precise, it can be translated using this technique for an immediate visualization by the patient and the restorative team. The initial diagnostic wax up was translated intraorally with flowable composite, genial universal flow, for an immediate evaluation by the patient and the restorative team. And modifications were completed and an impression was made. On the second model, a diagnostic wax up was performed to change the shape of the maxillary left central after review and discussion with the patient and the restorative team. A non perforated clear plastic tray by Cosmodent is sized to the diagnostic model. A uniform thickness of impression material in the tray provides dimensional accuracy and stability. I placed the diagnostic model into a beaker of water for five minutes prior to making the impression. Soaking the stone model facilitates its removal from the impression. A transparent polyvinyl siloxane material, Memesil 2 by Horaeus Culser, is injected into the maxillary impression tray. It is important to maintain the mixing tip of the syringe in the material to prevent air trapping and potential voids. Immediately position the tray and material over the diagnostic wax up model and use a firm and even pressure to seat until the gingival contours of the diagnostic wax ups are completely encompassed by the material and leave undisturbed for three minutes until the material has set. Notice how easily the tray removes from the model. This was achieved by soaking the model in water. The silicone matrix is easily removed from the non-perforated tray. Trim the excess material from the periphery of the matrix and inspect it on the model. Next, I create small openings on the incisal facial edge of the central incisors with an eight fluted needle-shaped finishing burr, an ET9 by Brassler. 
It is important to clean the internal surface of the impression and the orifices with an applicator tip to prevent silicone debris contamination of the composite material. Also, the orifice should be inspected with a ball-tipped instrument to ensure a clear passage of the composite material. And remember to enlarge the orifice to the size of the syringe tip. Before adhesive surface preparation, each tooth is separated by applying Teflon tape or a small amount of glycerin onto the adjacent teeth. The tooth is etched for 15 seconds with a 37.5% phosphoric acid semi-gel, gel etch it by Kerr, and agitated with an applicator tip. Rinse for five seconds and air dried using an ADEC warm air tooth dryer. And a light cured adhesive Genial Bond was applied to the unprepared surfaces, allowed to dwell for 10 seconds and air thinned to ensure a uniform distribution of the adhesive and light cured for 10 seconds. And any excess polymerized resin is removed at the gingival interface with a number 12 barred Parker. The clear silicone matrix is precisely placed over the maxillary arch and inspected for a complete seat and seal. A B1 shaded flowable composite resin Genial Universal Flow was injected through a small opening above the right central incisor and the composite resin is light cured through the clear resin matrix for 40 seconds from the facial and 40 seconds on the occlusal lingual. It is important to maintain a constant finger pressure on the buccal and lingual ends of the matrix. This ensures a tight seal of the silicone to the gingival interface of the tooth and an optimal adaptation of the material to the tooth surface. The clear silicone matrix is removed and the excess polymerized composite resin was removed with a scalpel blade, a number 12 BD barred Parker, while the gingiva is reflected with an 8A instrument to prevent tissue laceration. and the gingival areas are contoured and finished with a 30 micron tapered finishing diamond, a DET3 by Brassler, retracting the gingival tissue with an 8A instrument by Euphredi. It is important to inspect not only the emergence profile, but the interface for marginal integrity during gingival retraction. The natural anatomic facial contour of the central incisor is maintained using an eight fluted needle shaped finishing burr and ET9 by Brassler. The gingival interface is inspected and any residual resin tags are removed using a number 12 BD barred Parker. And the proximal surfaces were inspected for adequate contact and any residual resin tags or overhangs using unwaxed floss. The same procedure is accomplished on the maxillary left central incisor. Again, the maxillary left central incisor is separated by applying Teflon tape or a small amount of glycerin onto the completed composite transitional restoration and the adjacent lateral incisor. The entire incisal facial enamel surface of the maxillary left central incisor is etched using a 37.5% phosphoric acid semi-gel, gel etchant by Kerr. Agitated with an applicator tip for 10 seconds, and rinse for five seconds. Air dried for five seconds using a warm air tooth dryer by ADEC. A light cured adhesive Genio Bond was applied to the unprepared surfaces with an applicator tip and allowed to dwell for 10 seconds and the agent was air thinned using a warm air tooth dryer by ADEC and light cured for 20 seconds. Again, the clear silicone matrix is precisely placed over the maxillary arch and inspected for a complete seat and seal. An A1 shaded flowable Genial Universal Flow is applied with a syringe tip. Notice the controlled fluidity that comes from the syringe tip design and the thixotrophic property of the material. Thixotrophy is a structural breakdown of a material so it flows through the syringe tip 
when the material is stressed, and then the hydrogen bonding restructures and it becomes more viscous. Also, by maintaining a constant finger pressure on the buccal and lingual ends of the matrix, an optimal adaptation of the material to the tooth surface can be accomplished while reducing the potential for voids and ensuring precise contour and form. The excess is expressed with this pressure and the residual material is removed using an M1 ball-tipped instrument by American Eagle and light cured from the incisal and facial aspect for 40 seconds. Uno and Asmussen suggest using a slower polymerization which causes an improved flow of molecules in the material, decreasing the polymerization shrinkage stress in a restoration. The silicone matrix is removed and the excess polymerized composite resin was removed with a scalpel blade, a number 12 BD Bard Parker. And the gingival areas are contoured and finished with a 30 micron tapered finishing burr, a DET3 by Brassler, retracting the gingival tissue with an 8A instrument by Euphredi. The composite projection is removed and the incisal edge is contoured with an 8 fluted needle shaped finishing burr an ET9 by Brassler. I continue to reflect the gingival tissue with an 8A instrument to prevent tissue laceration while developing the emergence profile. A 8 fluted needle shaped finishing burr, an ET9 by Brassler, is used to finish the facial composite surface and maintain the natural anatomic contour. The occlusion is inspected with the patient in an upright position, in centric occlusion, and inspected for any prematurities. The prematurities can be equilibrated using the pyramidal shaped finishing burr, an H274 by Brassler. This shape conforms to the appropriate curvature of the tooth surface and the restoration. Notice the seamless interface. Next, the patient performs protrusive and lateral excursions and the transitional restorations are inspected for prematurities. The incisal edges and the facial surfaces of the composite restorations are precisely finished to obtain a smoother surface with a fine finishing disc, an ET composite polishing disc by Brassler. The gingival and facial region is smoothed and polished with a high shine silicone cup, a Composite Pro One Step by Brassler. The hollow cup provides an additional flexibility at the cervical curvature of the tooth. The objective of polishing is to reduce surface irregularity so that the distance between the scratches is less than the wavelength of visible light, which enhances the surface reflectivity. Polishing the facial surfaces is accomplished with a high shine silicone point using the high luster polishing system by Kerr Have. To import a high surface luster on the transitional restorations while maintaining the existing surface anatomy, a loose abrasive diamond composite polishing paste and a goat haired wheel are used at conventional speed. The composite surface gloss can be further enhanced by using a dry cotton buff with an intermittent staccato motion at conventional speed. Notice the high surface reflectivity of the material. The proximal surfaces are inspected for adequate contact and any residual resin tags or overhangs. The effectiveness of the finishing and polishing can be reflected by the type of composite resin utilized. The polishability of this nanoparticle, flowable composite resin system, Genial Universal Flow, is attributed to advancements in filler technology, abilities of the operator, and the finishing and polishing devices.